All right, in this video, I want to show how to set up a router. In this case, we'll be setting up a Ubiquiti Edge Router X, and I'm using Windows 10. This is what you have to do if the router is right out of the box, has not been set up, or it's been set back to factory settings, or the configuration has been set back. Either way, you need to set the computer that you actually are on, you need to set it on the same network as what the router is. Because the router is not set up to hand out DHCP yet. So let's go set up the computer that I'm on. And to do that, you go to the little symbol down on your toolbar that indicates that you're on internet or not. And when you are, it shows the little computer. And when you're not, it shows the little globe indicating that there's no internet connection. So you open it up by right clicking on it and click on settings and it will open up so you can actually change the network that you're on. So let's do that. And when you right click on it and tell it to open up the settings, this is a screen that you get in Windows 10. Then you need to go to Ethernet. Then you go over here is change adapter options. Then you get to the connection that the router is plugged into. If you have more, you have to figure out which one you're actually connected to. Then you double click to open it up. And this is the screen that you get. Then you go to properties. Then you go to the internet protocol version four. Double click it to open. Use the following IP address and you have to go 192.168.1. And I use 50 just to be on the same network as what the router is because the router is default out of the box 192.168.1.1. And we just need to be on the same. And then you just hit your tab button and that will fill in the subnet for you. Then you just Click OK and get out of all this. Then you open up the browser, whichever browser you decide to use. We're going to use Microsoft Edge. And then we can go and put in the address of the router, which is 192.168.1.1. That will get you into the router itself and you go to advance and you click on continue to there and the default is UBNT UBNT and all that should be on the little pamphlet that comes in the router box itself and you just log in and it says router is uh, is in default configuration. Do you want to use the basic? No, because we're not using the basic setup. And I'm going to say yes, allow, so they can get a little information to make the system better, to upgrade their firmware. Then we'll just go right over here to the wizard. Then we just go to the load balancing. And you can get to choose which ports on the router that will be used for the internet coming in. I'm just going to use ETH0 and ETH1. That's just the default, the first two, and then the rest of them I can use as devices or whatever I want to connect to the internet. So we're just going to leave these as it is. And I use DHCP and let the modem or the router, whatever internet service that I have, give an IP for this each connection individually. Now you do have an option right here that only this interface, if the other fails, means this is your primary one here. You can tell it to only use this one if this one actually fails. This one never gets used if this one continues to work. 
that's just like a uh, redundancy of, you know, fallback. Now, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to let both of them be running. That way, whenever I connect up a device, it will see what demand of how much speed it needs, and it will determine which one to send me through. If I'm just sending email, it will send me through, say, I got 10 megabits per second download on this one, and I got, say, 150 on this one. If I'm sending email, it, it's going to probably send me through this one unless this one's so congested that nothing else can go through it. Then it will automatically pick this one. If I start watching video, this one's, it says this one is not enough. It'll just automatically send me through this one. And now let's see, I'm going to create a new password. I'm going to use the same, but the password I'm changing. Report crashing. And that's choice of if you want to send them that information or not if the router has issues it will send them report don't send it does not send any personal information it just sends them of what happened and see if they can go in and figure out what it was and maybe they can change their firmware and the next update will fix the problem that your router actually had then we'll go right here configure the this section of the Port number two, three, and four, since you have port zero and one, port two, uh, port two, three, and four is the ports that you're going to be plugging your devices in to give it internet. Now, this is where you choose whatever IP uh, network that you want it to be on. Now, since I'm going to put this in a certain place, I'm going to have to have a certain IP address because devices that's going to be plugged in has a static IP. And it's got to be on that same network for them devices to get Internet. So I'm going to put 10.10.1.1. So when I plug them devices in, that them devices may have 10.10.1.36 it'll be on the same network same as i did with this computer to be on the same network as this router now when i set this up i'm going to have to unplug the ethernet wire out of port zero where that's the port that you have to plug into to be able to access this to set it up now, as soon as I put this configuration in here, say apply, I'm going to have to go unplug the Ethernet from port zero and put it in number two, three, or four, which is handing out IP addresses. And also have to go back in this computer in the network setting and tell it to get its uh, IP from whatever device is handing out IPs, which is going to be this router. So let me go ahead and apply this. And then, as you can see here, the current configuration will be replaced with uh, replaced and rebooted is required for the new configuration. It says use the browser as 192, you know, there. But we changed it, so we're going to have to use the address that we put in there. Accept changes. And then we go say reboot. It definitely goes through a few steps to be sure that you're sure that you want to do this. And then yes, I'm sure. And now it's changing. Now I'm going to unplug the cord from ETH one, uh, zero and put it in number two. And then I got to go into the computer here and change it so it will get its own IP from that router. And I'll show you that in a minute. All right, I have changed the port from ETH0 to ETH2. Now, I'm going to change this up here 
to an open tab. Then I'm going to go back into my settings of the network. And so it will actually, as you see, you go to Ethernet, go to change adapter, open this, go to properties, open this, obtain an IP address automatically. Then I just do this, 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 and this. And then I will be able to open that back up and let's see if it actually got, see it's trying to identify an address. So we go here and see now it's just switched over to network seven. Now it should be getting an address as 10.10.1 point something, whatever it decided to get from the router, whatever the router decided to give it. So we open this up, we can see what IP it actually was given. Go to details, see it, it gave it 10.10.1.38. That's the IP that the router gave it. So now to log back in to the router itself, you have to go to 10.10.1.1, which is the default gateway of the router, which now you see I use that 101011 instead of the 192.168.11 because now it's handing out DHCP of that. And the same thing. Type in your password that you use, unless you kept it as default. And there you go. Now you see you got WAN one and WAN 2. Then you got these three where you could plug in devices to get internet. You can plug in a switch to this one, say a 16 port switch, which that's what I'm doing, and have 15 ports that will get internet from this one port. Whatever devices you're going to run. That is how simple it is to set up so you can plug in internet here and internet here and that's what I'm getting ready to go do. I'm going to plug it internet into these two ports and you'll see over here where it says disconnected right now, it's going to say connected. And then it's going to uh, get an IP address from each internet provider. So let me go switch from the router that it's being used now there and to, to this one here. And you'll see this one actually will activate both of them lines. All right, now you see that them two are connected. And also, these are connected. This is an internet connection. That's an internet connection here. And this one here, E2 is the computer I'm on. And then E3 is the switch, the 16 port switch. And then I got one more that I can plug in that I'm not using. So that's how easy it is to set up an Edge Router X and have two Ethernet connection so it'd be load balancing. Now you can do another connection as well. You can take ETH2 and set it up as a Internet so you can have three connections in that one router. But that's how you set up the router 
with two connections. So if one drops out, the other one just keeps giving internet to everybody on the router. And it also load balancing, that's the term they use, load balancing is because it balances the load on them two connections according to whatever uh, speed command and the, the uh, actually the um, this speed command the demand I came talk straight here the demand that the device of computer cell phone tablet laptop TV whatever whatever demand of the speed it requires to do what it wants to do it will determine which connection regardless if you've got one two three maybe even four connections on the router as internet four different internet providers it will pick and choose which one would be the best to get that task done on that device as you saw in my previous video where I done a speed test and it picked the first one of the IP which is the slowest connection but as soon as it started getting demand of fast speed it flipped me over to the other one and used the other IP getting out to the internet but that's how you set it up to have more than one internet connection in one router for your network and like always if you haven't done yet be sure that you don't forget